we are going on a full culmination of nine years full time RVing and living on the road. Um, so we've really pretty much done it all um, where it comes to parking lot camping and stealth parking. Yes, I said stealth camping. Here's a picture of our rig. 33 foot Winnebago Mini Winnie. I love this rig. You've got the van front, so it's super easy to drive, but you have the RV back, which gives a whole lot of space for living. But how do you self camp with that thing? Let me tell you how. <laughs> When you're going through a neighborhood and looking to see if it's somewhere that you can park, if you have a van or a car, you're usually pretty much thumbs up. But if you've got a bigger rig like mine, when you go down a residential street, check to see if there's other RVs, work vans, trailers, like um, travel trailers, parked out on the curbside. If you see that, you should be good to go. Again, be careful that you don't park near any no parking signs. Again, the things you want to look for are wide open streets. The wider the streets, the better you have a chance of self parking there. Apartment complexes, again, curbside of apartment complexes in a neighborhood, that's a really great place to be because it looks like you're visiting someone. Large fences. If there's a large picket fence or a stone fence, um, those are fantastic to park in front of on the curb because one is they can't see you, you can't see them. Um, it kind of works out pretty well and then you can leave in the morning. When you stealth park for the night, draw your curtains. Some people like to use blackout curtains and will use reflectors. Others like to purchase blackout curtains through a place like Amazon. We just draw our regular curtains. Don't make noise, don't bang pots and pans, don't do your dishes, don't cook. Finish all of that before you come to your stealth parking place. Don't play loud music and don't turn your laptop or TV set up and definitely do not turn on your generator. Not even just for a few minutes. You want to be as quiet as possible. Last but not least, do not wear out your welcome. Don't sleep in, don't make coffee, don't have breakfast, don't walk your dog. Get up, get into the driver's seat and drive away to your next destination or to the next stop. Then go ahead and do all those things. Remember, we're being stealthy here and you can do it too. Hospitals. Now, I've heard some stealth campers will park in the parking lot of hospitals, which that could be really great, especially if you're in an area where the parking lot's kind of empty off to the side, you're not in the emergency section taking something that's important for someone else. Um, but off to the side, there's a lot of safety, there's a lot of lights, it would be a really great place. I've never done it there inside of that parking lot at a hospital because we're really large and I would never attempt that. Um, but I have heard of car campers and van lifers who've done that. We have, however, quite often parked curbside of medical buildings and hospitals and we have never had a problem there. So there's another one to add. Libraries. Yep, we stayed at a library um, right outside curbside um, in Washington State in a small town. And oh, actually it wasn't a small town, it would be called a small city. And um, we slept there several nights, probably a couple of weeks we would leave during the day, come back at night, um, long after it closed, usually around 10 in the evening. And we'd even get Wi-Fi. Yep, so don't, don't discount libraries. Um, we've done this in several states, in several towns, and even in some smaller cities. It feels safe, it's in a nice area. The libraries are usually in a nice area and we've never had a problem. 
And like I said before, we even get Wi-Fi every now and again. Curbside of dog parks, city parks, and town parks. We have done that in so many places, I can't even count. Dog parks. So we stayed in this little area of actually Santa Barbara. Um, Santa Barbara, California, it's very tough to find any place for um, stealth camping or boondocking when you have a bigger rig like ours, most especially. Um, but we found a dog park we could stay at and um, we were just curbside of that. We'd walk Percy in the evening and take him back out in the morning and then we would leave the next day. Town parks, again, curbside of them, it really works out really well. It's great for stealth camping and stealth parking. Um, another spot is hotels. Now, I've heard, again, of people parking in hotel parking lots and they haven't been bothered. I cannot attest to that. I've never tried it. Um, usually when I've stayed in hotels, they want your driver's license. Do I think that they check it? Mm, probably not. They probably don't go through the parking lot to check. But I'm not gonna take that risk. However, we have stayed at a lot of hotels curbside, um, parking our rig. And again, it's been just fine. It's worked out really well. Curbside of RV repair shops and dealerships. As you can see, the curbside, which is perfect because you can just park right there. And when someone passes by you, they're going to think that you are going to go in and get your rig fixed. But in reality, you're sleeping. Truck stops. Some truck stops are now making it so that there is actually RV spots with hookups even. We stayed in one outside of Nevada. Um, so that was pretty amazing. And um, again, you could stay there if you have a van or a car. Some truck stops, you have to use your intuition when staying at truck stops. Some are great and there are places specifically that RVs can fit into the parking area. I really like it when we get to have space in the front of the building. They often will have big wide spaces for RVs, wide spaces for vans, car spaces, you know where you can fit. However, we've also spent plenty of nights over with the trucks to the point where sometimes it feels nostalgic and homey. The only issue sometimes is sleeping at truck stops, trucks idle, and the noise from those engines can keep you awake. Our dog thinks it's a Terminator, and so sometimes it's not a great night's sleep. So you kinda gotta gauge your tolerance for that kind of noise. And of course the exhaust smell, sometimes um, that can get to you too. Planet Fitness has been a great place that we have stayed. We have gotten a membership before, it's $10 a month. We would work out, shower, and even sleep in the parking lot. And it was a small town in California where we did the most of this. It was even a beachy area, which I was pretty surprised they let us. Um, and there were about three other vehicles that did the same thing that we did. Um, night after night for actually a couple of months and it wasn't a big deal. Now, I've heard that some areas they're cracking down, they're not gonna let that happen, but there's a whole lot of areas where they just don't care. Um, so Planet Fitness can be a really great place to parking lot camp or stealth camp, however you wanna say it. So something about Walmarts, always check your city ordinances. Basically, that's just calling the Walmart and asking them if it's okay if you, they, you can stay in the lot. However, if you find a Walmart that has you know, a bunch of RVs or vans or even, you know, cars that look like they're stationary for the night, you're usually pretty safe. Um, we have stayed in several Walmarts across the country for several days 
sometimes even more than that, sometimes even a couple weeks at a time. Um, again, always leaving during the day and then coming back later in the evening. We've done this in Colorado. We've done this in certain areas of California, but never, never the beach cities. Their ordinances will not allow anyone to stay overnight and they have really tight security and they will come by and they'll ask you to go. Um, but there's a lot of times that we will be already in the parking lot and we'll call then and ask, you know, just tell them that you're coming through for a night. You're wondering if you can stay over in the evening and that you'll be leaving in the morning. And most of the time they're great with that. They'll say, sure, go ahead. Or they'll tell you if the city ordinance says no. Safeway, but make sure you get permission first. This is the third or fourth time we've stayed at Safeways. They're a pretty good hit. Um, if you're trying to find a place, you don't want to stay long, don't wear out the welcome again. It's not the same as a Walmart, um, but definitely if you need one or two overnights. I called up and I asked and he totally gave us permission and this is what has happened every time that we've stayed in a Safeway. And uh, he just asked me to park on off to the side um, edges of the parking lot instead of in the middle. and. Yeah, he said if I needed to, we could even stay two days if we needed. We don't, but it was super nice of him. So Safeway is another one to put into your arsenal. Cracker Barrel. Let's walk under the lights at Cracker Barrel. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It's a Cracker Barrel store. Oh my God, let's look out in the windows. An old bear lives here with his honey. Oh my God, that's too cute. Okay, come on. So right here, this is in the back of this mall behind a shopping center. We are specifically parked in the parking lot of Cracker Barrel. But to give you a very good example of places that you can actually stealth camp slash boondock, whatever it is that you want to call it, the roads behind, you can see the road behind here, a nice wide road. I actually see about three other cars right now. More than likely they're also still camping. So good luck in all of your stealth parking and your parking lot camping. Um, enjoy. Enjoy this life being on the road and being nomadic. Get out there and have an amazing Adventures in Wilding. Peace. This video is made possible with the help of our patrons. Support our work. Join our Wilding tribe on Patreon. It would mean a lot.